you very much. Uh, my name is Dr. Lucy King. I'm here to tell you about my project, also in Kenya, uh, working with human-elephant conflict, not lion conflict. Um, I work with Save the Elephants, um, mostly based in Samburu and Savo. Um, and I'd like to tell you about my project, looking at um, human-elephant conflict and how we've come up with a new method to stop elephants crop raiding. Um, Elephants migrate across the landscape, and what we see in Kenya is this conflict between elephants migrating and coming across farming areas. This is a typical photo of how elephants arrive into communities either in the day or in the middle of the night, and they cause real damage to, to farms, particularly crop raiding, damaging of water pipes, damaging of fences, um, and unfortunately there's often catastrophic results. Um, we've seen a lot more elephants die, and you must be aware of the terrible problems we're having at the moment. We're losing thousands, up to 40,000 elephants a year at the moment due to poaching. And some of these are from farmers, but in some situations, the farmers are turning a blind eye to allow poachers to come into the area. So this is a huge motivation for us to um, stop the issue. We discovered that elephants are scared of bees, and this is probably because they break open branches and trees, and the bees swarm into their face and sting them in the eyes, up the trunk, behind the ears, and in the mouth. Um, and we've looked at this behavior and thought, well, how can we study it better? So we took the sound of bees and we actually played it back to some elephants to try and understand how they actually respond. And here's a quick video of how the elephants do react when they hear bee sounds coming at them. So the speaker is hidden in the bushes on the left, um, and you'll see how quickly they react to bee sounds. And that's a huge bull in the middle. That guy is about six tons, and they run fast when they hear bees. And we've done this to many families. Um, not only do they run away very fast, uh, they actually head shake and dust themselves as if to knock the bees out of the air. And they actually call to each other a lot more. Not only a higher rate of calling, but they have a different call sound as well. And we've just published a paper showing that it's completely different to the call sounds they make to humans. Um, so this is really important behavioral work that goes behind what we did next, was to build beehive fences. And this is our new technology which we're putting up around farms, uh, using the communities to make the beehives, uh, where we can't do that, we buy beehives from Nairobi and take them to the project sites, and we help the farmers build their own defense fences around their small farms. Um, and it's really a lot of fun. We can use any type of beehive. Uh, we can use traditional hives. We don't encourage people to do that, to cut down trees, but we're otherwise using Langstroth hives or Kenyan top bar hives, any hive. And you connect the hives one to another every 10 meters around the farms. Um, and there is a piece of wire linking those at the moment. So if, if an elephant tries to pass through it, it creates a swinging sensation and all the beehives swing around the farm and it releases the bees and stings the elephant. Um, and so there's a little data sheet at the bottom just to illustrate what we're seeing. And we have hundreds of sheets like this of elephants approaching the farm, backing away, approaching the farm, giving up and just disappearing. Um, so our, our data is fascinating. It's all from nighttime, apart from I think one data sheet we got. Um, and of course, the, the main benefit of this is the, is the honey side. Um, the farmers have now got beekeeping as a sustainable income, um, and the fences not only keep away elephants, but they're making honey. We're hopefully moving on to things like candle making, um, and we have a product called Elephant Friendly Honey. Uh, so this idea is really spreading. And once we won the prize, we, we, just, had so we just had wings from winning the St. Andrews Prize, um, and we decided to build our own research center and training area. And it wasn't initially in our plan, but we realized that to expand, we needed a facility. Um, and we were given an acre of land by the community. And um, due to this amazing funding, we were able to start building straight away. And we only finished last month. Uh, we had the prize ceremony, I mean, the opening ceremony. We now have a wonderful honey processing room where we started doing professional training with our farmers, um, harvesting, bottling jars on site. I brought a jar here if you'd like to come and see it afterwards. Um, and the excitement throughout the community of having this center and a place to actually do um, the professional side of honey processing has given everyone a huge momentum. Uh, we're now able to hold community meetings and training in the actual center. We can, we can bring people in and simply walk them to the beehive fences and show them how it works. Nobody believes us until they see it and they talk to a farmer and say, does it really work? And they, I can hear them asking in Swahili. And they all say, yes, it really does, you know, because they think I can't understand. But it's just amazing to hear the farmers convince other farmers that it's working. Um, as you see, more photos here of our lovely new office that we have, um, all paid for by St. Andrew's Prize and one or two other donors who chipped in some furniture. Um, and we've got more donations of beehives coming in from donors who just love the idea and want to donate a beehive to the project. So we just need between 10 and 12 beehives per, per farm. 
Uh, we've started to get more engaged with the school groups around um, engaging kids in art competitions, getting them to draw their experiences with human-elephant conflict, just one example of elephants crop breeding at night, um, and giving out T-shirts as prizes to these kids who only have about three T-shirts in their whole wardrobe. Um, so they've worn them non-stop since they won those. And now our research centre has opened up to internships, students, PhD, master's students. We have places to sleep, uh, very simple but nice tents. Uh, we're able to start our new research on pollination studies. We've now engaged a postdoc who's going to be helping us. The postdoc comes from a university in Kenya. She's a woman doctor, and she'll be bringing her own students underneath her. Um, so we're really focusing on the next stage of our, of our project. Now we have the facility. Um, our global education is, is getting bigger and bigger. Um, we have a great website, all funded by St. Andrew's Prize Money. Um, so please have a look at it if you have the time and download any of our documents that are on there. Um, we're very, very proud that this uh, work has now really become embedded within the Kenya Wildlife Service, which is the wildlife department of the country. Um, we are in their management plan for elephants uh, for the next 10 years. Um, they've even used our photo on the front page. And just last week, we got the first beehives donated from the wildlife department to set up a collaborative beehive fence project with them because they really believe in it. Um, and that means everything to get the wildlife department involved. Uh, we've seen new projects explode around Kenya, um, around Uganda, Botswana, Mozambique, Tanzania. And um, last year, I went to Sri Lanka with my prize money as well to set up a project. And I'm heading out there again in two weeks to set up a PhD student working in Sri Lanka just to see if it can work in Asia because those Asian elephants are highly endangered. Um, and if it can work in Asia, that means we can spread the idea to another species completely. Um, so just the last slide of a honeycomb of thanks to all our donors and, and support, um, particularly the St. Andrew's Prize, who've given us wings, really. It's been amazing the last year. And I haven't been able to achieve as much as everyone else here. I've only had 12 months, but I can't wait to come back in another 15 years and tell you what we've been doing. So <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>